That's way better in God mode. Yeah, it is. It is. The uh it, it gives it some extra bottom and, and some depth and uh just a little <laughs> bit more life, really. Yeah. So just in the nick of time, I have to In the nick of time. time. Why is the world about to end here on six six six? How the fuck are they coming up with six 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 from June six, two thousand twenty four? I get six six eight. Right. Oh, because two plus four is six. Right, but that's but not how you do it. It's twenty twenty four, so it would correct. Be... See, numerology is numerology is as retarded as flat Earth theory, but yeah. So it was actually two yeah. years ago. It was six six six. Wow! It yeah. just fucking finished encoding. Does it work now? It might. Let me hit the try. No. All right. Let, let's just reload it. Oh, I can't. Are you talking about on Rumble? Fuck yeah! Oh my god! It's working. All right. So I know what to do here. This is uh. Are we up to episode twenty nine? Uh, I think so. I think it's time for a potty break. You're gonna make me going at it for quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's time for a potty break. I, I, you know, I don't trust a fart at this point. I've been drinking coffee all day. Fact check true. Um, Episode twenty nine. In, in fact, this is the potty break edition. So again, it it all makes sense. Take a catch a whiff. You'll, you'll see. It definitely makes sense. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're kind of dancing around the issue here, but, um. Just yesterday, I believe it was, at, um, <clears throat> they, I'm going to have to wet my mouth first to speak these Frenchy words. Hang oh, on. good Lord. So we're just going to dive right into it. I do want to preface uh, this by saying that no precedents were set here. This is not actually like novel phenomenon. Well, I would say this is the first time an American head of state went to um, Colville-sur-Mer. Yeah. Colville-sur-Mer. Colville-sur-Mer. Yeah. Who wants to learn French after that? Seriously. They're freedom fries, motherfucker. Anyways, the first presidential American head of state type personage to go up the mouth of the fucking Seine there in Normandy. Uh, to celebrate the Deuce Day and literally, literally shit his pants on stage. On stage. On like, stage. Right next While the to, cameras were rolling. Right next to the teacher's favorite pet and her younger husband, Emmanuel yeah. Macron. Yeah. Um, Trudeau's right favorite boy toy. Yeah. Colville. You ever you ever see that picture where uh, it's it's Trudeau and Macron, and they they've each got like each other's uh, heads in their hands, and they're staring into each other's eyes like they're yeah. you know about to stick their tongues down their throats. Yeah, it, it's it's a very very broke back moment. Very yes, very broke back moment. Really gay. Yeah, like fucking. Turbo Supreme Gay. I think I have that somewhere. Turbo Supreme. If I don't, but, somebody um, send it to me. Matter of fact, just go ahead and send it to me if you have it. As I was researching and putting together the video on my new open source, I mean, I I, I just got to shout out Dead Fella right now, man. And Kingsley, man. Kingsley, I'm talking Dang about Dr. Him. Dennis. Dr. Dennis and Dead Fella every day now. Sending me free software, sending me plugins, hooking me the fuck up, man. My music just keeps getting better and better and better and more and more and more original, dude. I don't hardly have to sample anything anymore. I I'm making it all from scratch. It's just me and tobacco and I'm, I'm forgetting something here. Oh, oh the, the weeds. weeds. The weeds. Yeah. <laughs> How could I forget that? Well, apparently it affects your memory. 
But I don't forget about your weeds. I say the best for last. Um, and the last shall be first. Oh, yay. Uh, so here we are. I I'm putting together this thing, and I found the full 16-minute clip of Joe Biden at the swimming pool facility in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, what Is we're going to call. He said, I got hairy legs. Yeah, the, the, the infamous corn pop speech. Oh, the corn pop speech. Yeah. You know, corn pop was a bad dude. That's right. They ran with bad dudes. <laughs> That's right. And, and that, as he goes on talking about the pomade and the grease, and, and, and then he just keeps using more ebonics and um, pandering and trying to speak jive, it just goes downhill fast. And I was like, I'm trying to make a video about him shitting his pants, not about how much of a pedophile fucking racist he is. Um, it's totally changing the mood. Then luckily, in the middle of that, something I'd never caught before, all of a sudden he sees in the crowd, he says, oh, there's my daughter, Ashley. Hey, Ash, come on up here to the stage. Literally puke Bad in my idea. mouth. Bad clipped idea. it out, clipped it out, put it on there. Like, watch. Don't, don't people watch the news? Now, people clapped. And don't they know that the diary around. was proved real, which means that Joe Biden used to shower with his daughter when she was a little girl and probably old All enough for it to be wildly inappropriate? When she was still in the eighth grade in junior high school. About yeah, the, like that old. High school, like that old. Like already meant. But it, anyway. So he says, hey, Ash, come on up here, Ash. Um, you know, and the whole gesture on the face. And then, like, I hear the people clap, and you see heads turn and obviously look toward her because the camera's looking at him, but there's people standing behind. Anyways, long story short, I'm at this point, I'm done with the video. I've already got my clips, but I'm like, I'm waiting for Ashley to go up there and stand next to Pop, like, you know. Like they're standing in the shower or something. I don't know. So I'm watching and watching. I'm like, fuck, man, I, I got to hurry up and make this video. God damn, there's six more minutes of this. He just keeps going on and on and on. It's all the way to the end of the video. Finally, they play him out because he, he's talking about something about this one girl. And they play him out at the end. They, 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 they crank up the fucking music and, drone, and drown him out. And, and, and two people come up and lead him off. Ashley Biden. Never, ever, never went up and joined him at the diet. I wouldn't either. Fuck all that noise. So, without further ado, did, did I send? Wait, I logged in. Did I send the link? I don't know. Oh, wait, no. I, I have to share the link. Otherwise, I won't hear it when it plays. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we figured that out before because even though you're the host of this stream lab stream, I have the power, he man. <laughs> make it make it make sense. Oh my god. Okay. I don't know. I still don't I don't think they've fixed it yet. Um let's see. It's asking me if I want to share the audio. Yeah, why not? I I mean it would probably help. Why not? I mean it is a radio show. Well, let's see. All. We need to go over here first. This is so confusing. I have um I have half a mind to just go ahead and go back to using Zoom because it just worked. Like, it was nothing I had to like really worry about or you know it wasn't difficult to make it work. It just freaking worked, and now it's but not freaking working. We, we talked about this. I know that Zoom was a very sexy Chinese chick and things kind of worked and clicked and, 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 and you departed. You, you, you said your goodbyes with, with uh, Zoomy Zoomy on amicable terms. I understand that, but give Streamlabs a chance, man, before you just jump right back in the arms. I mean, do you want to eat with chopsticks again, Drizzle? Really? I mean, I mean you can't. We, we've been giving them a chance. Yeah, you know, it's it's like a few months now of not having the functionality, and it's it's starting to frustrate me. 
Because yeah. I know the other thing works. Yeah, all the other ones work. Yeah. So that's kind of a drawback for Streamlabs, that this appears to be a Rubik's Cube to them that they just can't solve. You know, you own a pro tip, peel the labels off, and then glue them back on. and Then tell someone that you solved the Rubik's Cube. Um, well, I guess uh, we're going to take a potty. Well, I shouldn't say we're going to take a potty break. We're going to be right here. But um, our glorious sniffer in chief and pedophile is going to debut a video that has never been shown anywhere because I just uploaded it and then threw it on Rumble and it just got done encoding. And now That's I'm right. going to watch it for the first time. Interstellar right else. premiere right here Blam. on Liberty Radio. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, see the, our glorious supreme leader um, shit his pants over and over again. Hey, all the kids, you want to come up here and listen? Come on up here. Come up behind me. Oh, God, it's so gross. Because I'm not holding up between them and the pool, man. Come on. My name's Joe Biden, Vice President Biden. Everybody come on up and stand with me. And there's my daughter, Ashley. Come on up here, Ash. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. I'm the president. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Once again, feel free, young and the motherfucking Bill, 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 Bill. Bill. Yeah, this song Hodus XL the BI. Some of that Joseph Providence Vice Jr. actor. I get a rock hard hard when I sniff the kids. Got along how it sucks both of my stuff. Yeah, I pooped on myself. I pooped on myself. I get a rock hard boner when I sniff the kids. Not along how it sucked both of my son's dick. Yeah, I pooped on myself. I pooped on myself. I said my son is a crackhead, but I'm the president. I pooped on myself. I pooped on myself. But I wrote the damn crime bill. I pooped on myself. I get a rock car corner when I sniff the kids. Daughter in law Hallie sucked both of my son's dicks. Yeah, I pooped on myself. I pooped on myself. My son is a crackhead, but I'm the president. I pooped on myself. I pooped on myself. Is a crackhead and I'm the president. I pooped on myself. That is a classic. Absolute classic. 
Wow. That's even wow. even better than the original. Well, yeah, because I, I, I took the time now that I've got the new software and I've learned how to master the audio and split the stems and, you know, take the spikes out so that it's not redlining on the vocal tracks and just all these things I've learned. And, I you know, when I saw we're doing the potty break edition and then I watched the video in uh, Sumer, you know, there in uh, Normandy. On cost, I was like, man, I now that I know what I know, I gotta go back to the Joe Biden song and fix the shit. I gotta fix the the fart noises. I, I got you know, there's a lot of things that you know. It turns out there's a science to making this shit. Really? Because poop. <laughs> but did you? Did you think that, that that song would come back around? No. That, that you would have a reason to take another crack at it? No, I did not. Right. I, 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 that, that's why I was in a scramble to make the uh, song. And then when I got done with the song, I was like, well, fuck, I got to have the fucking video where he's there with my crawling. Fuck, I got to have that. Got to have it. They're, they're, they're commemorating the, uh, 80th anniversary of the D-Day, the Deuce Day. Hmm. How many died going storming that beach? Wasn't even uh, just whatever, man. whatever. That nothing. There's, I don't know hardly anything that's had more lies told about it than D-Day. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's only been, what, how many years now? 80 years. 80 years. That's uh, that's 44. four generations of time to, to make up stories. Because in those four generations, people who are actually there and would be able to give you uh, an eyewitness account of what happened, what was going down, and, and what people were thinking and saying. Uh, they're they're slowly fading into the background into oblivion, and by now, I mean my God, how ain't really many, any of them left. During the actual taking of the beach, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that at least at at the very least half of all the casualties in the taking of the beach was from soldiers, Allied soldiers. It's fucking drowning before they ever even got to the fucking water. Because, of, you know, they, they didn't really have good fathoming. And so they didn't, you know, they had, they, they didn't really know, they had no bathymetric mapping. So, you know, they don't know the water depth. And so, you know, and, and they've got these, and of course, as soon as they come under fire, they're like, fuck it, just jump in the water with all your fucking gear on and all your ammo strapped for your thing. And then you just bunk, sink. sink like a stone, yeah. right? fucking ground and so you know after the battle all these dead bodies wash up on the fucking shore and it's like i mean honestly if you just simply made it to the shore itself that you've was already an achievement. beat out over achievement half unlocked. the guys yeah. you know and then when you then when you look at the actual, actual achievement too in like a call of if duty you look game. at the casualty rate of those that made it on shore and then made it to the top of the bluff and survived the barbed wire and the fucking mortar rounds and machine gun pits and everything else. I mean, it was highly fortified by the Wehrmacht. And so, you know, I'm going to say that they really had a, didn't really have, that high of a casualty rate taking on that clip as high as one would think, which speaks to the acts of valor and the strategy employed by those that did make it to the beach. But to me, the untold story of D-Day is all of the unnecessary deaths from soldiers just fucking drowning to death. And, and that is a complete failure in logistics in being able to deliver soldiers to shore. That, 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 
It's called, you know, over the shore logistics, joint over the joint over the shore, uh, joint logistics over the shore, J lots. And, and, you know, for example, um, the J lots barges that they tied together uh, to build their Gaza pier, which then extends from the uh, man-made dike of, you know, crushed cinder block and human remains that they've been dumping through the from the beach through the shallowest part of the water because the whole issue with that area there by rafa on the mediterranean sea is that it's a very very shallow bank going out and so from the shoreline going out 1200 feet time you get out 1200 feet from the shoreline the water's only about eight to ten foot deep that's still not deep enough for ships to fuck with it man they, they need dry Especially if it's a, a med, you know, a med sea, unless it's a river craft or something, but you're in the Mediterranean Sea, which is part of the ocean, you're going to have an ocean liner. So they got to have a draft of at least 40, 50 feet. That's why this fucking Gaza Pier has got to go all the way out there. And it's getting to a point to where they're like, um, I guess they need to make more dead bodies and cinder block um, rubble so that they can keep overfilling. But at, there's a point at which the U.S. Army Corps and the United States Army showed it because, believe it or not, the U.S. Army has ships. You would think, but isn't that what the Navy does? Yeah. I thought they were all stuck in Baltimore Harbor. But the Army has ships, too. So the Army's there, and they tie up the J-Lots barges. And then um, a, a, a wild wind comes up, and they're trying to move one of the barges around and reposition as they're... Because they're continuing to, to dump more, you know, arms, legs, and cinder block as they're extending the earthen dike basically out into the water extending straight off the beach arms and, so and legs are good dock building material are they well you know it helps the cinder blocks and everything kind of glue together as the rotting corpses mix in with it um, yeah, that makes sense yeah um like it'd horse really paste fucked up. it'd be really fucked up if there's like some of them that are still alive in the rubble and they like dig out and see that they're all the way out like at the end of the pier by the sea and they're like I'm alive, and I can swim to fucking freedom, son of a bitch. God loves me especially much. But anyways, um, they're moving the barges around, and, and the barge got loose and ran aground. And so then one ship went to go rescue the barge, and it ran aground. And then two more ships went to rescue that ship, and they ran aground. Um, Wait, is this a Three Stooges movie? No, this is the United States Army building the Gaza Pier. Yeah, same difference. And so after all that happened, then they finally had to basically build a temporary base on the beach. Um, and then all the boots on the ground and everything are there on the beach. Um, but it's not, in, it's not in the Gaza Strip. It's just on the beach of the Gaza Strip. Yeah. Well, Which, I know. I've actually, I guess it, I've, technically I've, it is in the Gaza Strip. But well, it's on the beach. Right. But I mean, I've I've had the good fortune to know a few engineers over the course of my life. And each and every single one of them has told me that they are geniuses. And I'm just I'm I'm astounded that a bunch of geniuses can't seem to figure uh figure this problem out you know like isn't isn't that their job like isn't that what engineers are supposed to do they're supposed to create solutions to problems that we have right or am i just really fucking high well you see the problem with engineering is let's go back to the days when the brooklyn bridge was built by uh uh augustus roebling and then his son and uh daughter-in-law uh washington and Emily Roebling. Um, actually, the Brooklyn Bridge construction was supervised and completed by uh, his wife, um, Emily Roebling, um, in yeah. 1883. Because the, they'd gotten the caisson disease, which would later be called uh, the bends because of failure to decompress at an appropriate rate. Because uh, they'd sunk caissons down to the East River to get, you know, so they get those huge stone P 
piers that support the um uh, what do you call them the suspension cables um and then those stone piers had on the very bottom this iron case on with cutting edge all the way around on four sides and then you got men down there literally digging the sand hog digging and putting it in buckets and buckets and taking it up and they're in compressed air chambers and then when they came out of the compressed air chambers too fast and then their blood would explode and they'd get the bins and they got you know bu- uh, was it bubbles in their blood yeah nasty shit bad. nasty shit bad happens stuff. to you bad stuff you uh, don't know you don't want none of that but they had those case on so that they could remove all of the sand and river mud until at last they were resting upon solid bedrock. And then they could start laying the bricks of the, which they were laying the bricks the whole time of the piers above them. And now the, you know, those stone piers of the Brooklyn Bridge are on solid fucking bedrock bored through all that mud. So, um, well, that'd be good Emily for when Albers- the earthquakes come. When they went to build that bridge, the bids went out to the best design, not the cheapest bidder. Today, when bridge contracts are let, it goes to the cheapest bidder. And so, you know, you look at this. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, we want the cheapest. That makes me feel so safe as a motorist. Yeah, and and that's, you know, for example, um, there in um, Corpus Christi, at the mouth uh. of the Nueces River, you've got the Corpus Christi Harbor Bridge project, which is fakaka. You know, it was supposed to, it should already be done. Gordy Howe's now complete, which is the concrete cable stayed span that connects um, Detroit, Michigan to Windsor, Ontario, uh, and uh, Canuckistan there, uh, yeah. Canada. Eh? Um, but Windsor. Yeah, uh, you know, the, these concrete cable stayed bridges, these concrete compression bridges, it's absolute dirt cheap. Build it as fast as you fucking can, as cheap as you fucking can. It only has to last for 50 years if it'll last that long. You know, there's a cable stayed span that they built between Ironton, Ohio, and Russell, Kentucky that replaced the third oldest bridge over the Ohio River, the original Russell Ironton Bridge, a a steel masterpiece of a bridge, but it had hairpin turns on both ends. Oh, nice. That sounds like fun. Coming up from Kentucky end, it had a hairpin to the left, and then when you got to the Ohio end, it had an absolute 90-degree turn at the very end of the bridge, and you're still 100 feet in the air, and a hairpin to the right, and then down the ramp to street level right in the middle of downtown Ironton. But that wasn't an issue because the Ironton end of the bridge gets wide right at the very end. Well, it did. It's gone now. But it got wide at the end because that's where the toll booth was. And everybody had to stop to pay toll there. So it wasn't an issue. Oh, was that, that was genius now. design. Absolute uh, genius yeah. design right there. Mind you, in 1903. Your tax dollars most- at work. Most of the traffic crossing the bridge in 1903 was led by horses. There were a few Model T Fords that went across the bridge in the first few years that it was open. But again, the bridge was open for traffic in 1903. It was in perfect working order. Granted, it had the dangerous curves on both ends, but they could have simply fixed the approach spans. But instead... The bridge being completely sound, they just they 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 disassembled it carefully and sold the bridge to somebody else, where the bridge was then put on new piers and it's back in use. So again, there was no reason to tear out this bridge and replace it entirely when it's so good that they sold it intact. They the, the center span. They very, very carefully separated it first and set it down on barges, and it went down, and they, it got put somewhere else, and hmm. it's back in use. But they built, to replace it, one of these fucking concrete cable-stayed fucking bridges that look, sort of looks like a suspension bridge, but it ain't. Why would you even do that? with concrete under compression, and the bridge deck already is, like, buckled. It, when you drive across the bridge deck from one pier to the other, uh, crossing the middle of the Ohio River, 
It feels like you're driving on a piece of cooked bacon. Why would you drive on that then? And because it's it, it's like undulating, and it's just getting more and more undulating. And I hate to say it, I, I bet it's climate it. change. That's probably what's causing it. The bridge has only been open. The new bridge has only been open for two and a half, three years. There, the uh, ODOT, that's a Ohio Department of Transportation. They're now inspecting that bridge every two months, every sixty days. They've got cranes underneath it and above it inspecting it. That's not normal. Shit's fucked up with that bridge. I, it's gonna go on the water, man. Oh, you think? It's it's it, it, it's not, not, not gonna last. Not in Joe Biden's America. Come on. It replaced the one hundred twenty year old bridge. That didn't need to be replaced with a cheap, modern construction contracted bridge with the new design of the day. Con- concrete, you know, pre stressed tension concrete. Concrete sections of bridge that are held together with steel cables. And if any of the steel cables break, then the concrete's no longer held in compression. Which means piece by piece by piece, all the little, you know, imagine like if you got a necklace with beads on it and then you break the string. Well, then all the beads, the beads go everywhere. Well, in this case, they would go on the water along with the motorists and their vehicles. Single point failure. Yeah. Bridges with single point failure. I mean, like what happened in Baltimore. Happen- like what happened in Point Pleasant. Yeah. With the Mothman on yeah. top of the fucking silver bridge. Single point failure. What, what that means is there's elements to the bridge where if that one bolt, if that one rope, if that one cable stay, if that one element breaks, chain reaction, blah, 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 the whole thing's in the water. That's, That's not why it's how called a single point failure. Bridge. Yeah. Single point failure. Brooklyn Bridge ain't got no single point failure. Correct. Roebling designed it, and the prototype for that is the first bridge that was ever built over the Ohio River in the city where Jerry Springer was mayor. Jerry, Jerry, I'm talking about Cincinnati. That's right. In Ohio. What? Um, WKRP in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, with Lonnie Anderson and her big team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I got the white stripe marking off my fucking uh, office space here. Don't cross it, right, Les? Um, but anyways, the original Roebling suspension bridge actually the Wheeling Bridge was first. That's right. The Wheeling suspension bridge in Wheeling, West Virginia was built over the Ohio River before the Civil War. The Ohio River Suspension Bridge was built and completed in 1865, which would be at the end of the Civil War, because that's 1865, that's run to the wilderness, Appomattox Courthouse, um, Lee surrenders to Grant. Um, But the third bridge to ever be built across the Ohio River after the two Roebling Bridges was in 1903. With hairpins on both sides of the bridge, the Ironton Russell Iron Bridge. Um, anyways, uh, so the Roebling bridges were built with uh, trusses and two sets of cables, so that if one set of cables failed on either side, there was auxiliary. If both of the cables failed, it was still held up by how truss bands between both towers so that the deck and the passengers still would not collapse into the river. Triple design for safety. And as a result, the Wheeling Bridge built in the 1840s, still in use today. Yeah, I would drive on that today. Yeah, The Roebling Suspension Bridge built in Cincinnati, 1865, still in use to to this day. The East River Bridge, a.k.a. Brooklyn Bridge, built by Roebling in 1883, still in use to this day. You know, no single points of failure. So, I mean, it's not that we can't do better. We consciously are picking the fastest and cheapest and worst designs. 
constantly when it comes well, to it's to it's also part of the the planned obsolescence in yeah. the in the society in the materials that are manufactured to build the things right well it's, we could it's build a negative you a cheaper entropy. bridge we could build you a cheaper bridge faster but it's only going to last 40 years. Right. But you'll save money now. Well, fuck yeah, build that. Let, build us a bacon deck concrete bridge where it's just undulating and yeah. It makes you feel, every time I cross that bridge, I'm like, please God, please God. So that's please. how feeble-minded our, uh, our public works systems have become. Just do it for the lowest price possible. Does, we'll the, the worry thing, about that in 20 years. Because, you know, they, they have such a stellar track record of being like, oh, hey, that thing uh, that we said we'd worry about in 20 years, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and fix it now because it's been 20 years. That happens all the time, right? This is what blows my mind. Virtually every state you go to in the United States, some states are worse than others particularly on the interstate highways, on the freeways, but on the main U.S. highways and such as well, uh, there's a phenomenon called bridge hump. Bridge hump, which is right before you drive across the bridge deck and right after you drive off the bridge deck, the road dips. So when you go to cross the bridge, you're, you're literally going, ba-bounce, 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 when you go to cross a bridge. Any person driving a vehicle in the United States of America knows exactly what in the fuck I'm talking about right now. Mm. Blum, blum. Blum, blum. That's the big difference that I'll never forget about riding on the uh, Autoroute and the Autobahn and in Germany and in France and, and on the Autopistas, the freeways in Europe. Whether it's Viaduct, Tunnel, no matter what's going on, I mean, you could literally balance wine glasses in your hands, filled with wine to the very rim and not fucking spill a drop riding in the fucking passenger seat. It's the smoothest fucking ride. And you wouldn't even know that you've Sounds gone like from you know solid from ground. Experience. Yeah, you wouldn't know you've gone from solid ground to a bridge unless you look out your it's window sideways and you're reference. like... Oh my God, like we're over a fucking alpine canyon that's like 2,000 feet deep. And now we're in a tunnel and now we're on solid ground again. And at no time is your vehicle going, blah, 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 blah. oh, damn, like fuck, man. Fuck, man. It's terrible. Are you driven through Arkansas lately? It's terrible. Dude. Like on some of the bridges, you can literally see when you're coming up to the bridge that there might actually be like a quarter inch or a half gap. inch yep. gap where yep. the road has literally, the dirt that they pushed up against the end of the bridge has sunk and compacted down to where the road doesn't match right up with the solid ass concrete bridge deck. Yeah, And so you get that blump, 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 blump. You don't get that in Europe anywhere on any road because that when you build a bridge the bridge has to get to solid ground and they discovered around the 1920s 30s with the wpa and everything else they could build the bridges cheaper if they pushed instead of using um supporting piers they just take the head walls at either end of the bridge and push them all the way up to the channel or the road they're crossing. Then they can fill in the approach spans with just dirt and just, you know, roll dirt until you're, you know, within 18 inches of the final road surface and sprinkle some gravel, lay some blacktop. Okay, we're done. And then it all compacts down because the bridge deck should go to solid fucking ground hmm. you can't make it you can't make a brand new berm of a of a like a, a earthen dike going all the way up to brand new concrete headwalls and then just 
blacktop right up to the edge of a of a narrow bridge channel and then not expect the road to fucking sink mm. and so you go to other countries and the bridge goes from solid ground to solid ground and and you know if it's a narrow channel well then the bridge deck will continue beyond the head wall until it's on solid ground that way you don't have a gap and and that way you're able to drive on the freeway in germany at you know 130 clicks an hour which is really you know what bad. else they get in europe what is that like 85 miles an hour there are speed like limits that. on like the that. autobahns in germany yeah, there like are 90, sections 100. there yeah, are like up in montana where it's yeah. like they don't there's not actually like a speed limit if the sun's out yeah it's fine do whatever you want let her rip yeah let her rip no, but you know what else they get in Europe, Yona? They get uh, they get Joe well, Biden lots. shit in his pants. Yeah, yeah, and he shit on his pants right at the moment they're honoring all the dead, and everyone literally standing shitting on the dead in a moment yeah. of silence, the most somber moment, the the climax of the whole thing, and he bends over and. Fart noise. Uh, pay down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that the empire is over. It's done. Yeah, it's not coming back. This is as good as it's gonna be for a while. Yeah, Enjoy World it while III, it lasts, because yeah. we're still on a downward trajectory. Oh, it 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 I can tell you where it's gonna end up. Um it turns out World War Three has already started. Oh really? And we're on ha, the losing redacted side. Redacted was wrong. <laughs> we're on the losing side. I mean, why would the Yona say World War Three has already started? Well, let's see. Are there Russian troops in Ukraine? Check. Are there American troops in Ukraine? Check. Are there NATO European troops in Ukraine? Check. Are the Russians firing at the Americans and the Europeans in Ukraine? Check. Are the Americans and the Europeans attacking targets in Russia? Oh, yeah. Joe Biden Check. was like, go ahead and launch that shit. Let's get yeah. this going. I got a fucking selection later. Yeah, we need war. So. We'll be a wartime president. Jack. And then you've got all of the um, fighter planes. Yeah, you remember? Um, Do you like my Biden impression? The, the the two Ukrainian fighter eight, the ace fighter pilots from uh, Kiev. It was Moonfish and what was the other one? Juice, Juice and Moonfish. I think. I think it should be right. Moonfish and Juice. Uh, or it was that, moonfish. That comes juice. off the tongue better, yeah. I'm sure about moonfish. Not so sure about the juice. Neither, neither is the Azov Battalion. But anyways, um, neither is Nicole Brown. No. <laughs> what, so is that uh, too soon? Yeah, it's too soon. Hey, if the club, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Right. What was it that Johnny Cochran? And and you had uh, uh, All Robert. Right, so does Mordashian. this mean Alexa actually got it right? And World War Three started last Thanksgiving. Oh my God! So Kim Kardashian and the sister and all of that. What, what do they only, have to do with World War Three? Their only claim to fame is because their dad, Robert. Yeah. Was working with Johnny Cochran. Yeah. He was working help with the, the Cochran Law Firm. String OJ off of the fucking murder rap. That's right. And 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 he did successfully. That's right. And then married his daughter to Yeezus. That's right. And one of his one of his daughters uh married uh, Lamar Odom, basketball player. Right. And, and I don't know about the child, other ones. I don't know if they sold the named, other ones off um, yet or not. He named his child North, so his 
child's name is North Northwest. West. Yeah. Which is kind of cruel if you ask me. But I really think uh, we'll that, see. We'll see how the kid turns out. That's really fucked up, man. I mean, that's I can cool. I can kind of uh empathize a little bit uh with you that know, child. Cuz I when feel I think screwed of Northwest, with the name I got. Parents were very Northwest, fucking original. And I think of like Portland and Seattle and Vancouver. Shout out that's tyrants. Um, I'm I've not been to the Northwest, not seen it with my own eyes, so I don't want to judge. But I know that the Northwest starts with my Oregon. There you go. Yeah. Hashtag. It starts with my Oregon. That's right. It and if you're lucky, it'll end with your you Oregon go. too. That's right. <laughs> oh, I got to get that in the chat. It starts. With my Oregon. I, again, with the Oregon. I, so. I, you know, I was talking with Tom Cooper from the New Prisoners the other yeah. day about this. And I don't understand how the hashtag Oregons are just going over so many people's fucking head. Dude, man. people are like, dense. People are so dense. Like pop fly out the. Sent right field. Well, no, because uh, when they're when they're watching, like, if you're throwing it into a chat where you're watching, like, I, I don't know, like Last American Vagabond or you know something like that, that's more informational, and you're you're like coming at them with jokes. Like, people are not in the mood that like they're they're looking for jokes. Like, they're they're half of them are in there looking for doom porn. And the other half are there because they, I don't know, they, they think they're going to learn something that somebody else doesn't know or something. I don't know. It's weird. We These audiences get, are fucking weird, man. We come here to get fact harder. And so um, since, uh, you know, I, I do pay attention to chat, we appreciate the engagement. Oh, yeah. All the love and support. Uh, Six is saying. We even appreciate the spammers. Yeah, you know, I keep getting more followers. Um, Thank God Harps followed me. I want to give a shout out to my friend in Australia, Harps, who started following my channel, The Peasants Podcast. Our moderators are ruthless, dude. He's the first one. He's the first real person that's not trying to get me to pay him to promote my channel in like five or six in a row of that shit. But anyways. um, Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Rewind. Step back one step. It's crazy. People ask you to pay them to promote your channel? Yeah. Do we want to like name drop here? We've gone over this. I get fivers. I get all these, you know, and. and, Oh, those those bozos. And their English isn't even that good. Their English isn't even that good. I I, I have to wonder if it's written by a computer. Yeah, they're probably large uh, language models. The new number six says. I'm starting a new podcast about roads with Yona. I'm going to call it Roadhead. Well, here's your get fact uh, tidbits tonight. CBR and easel. Let me, let me write this out. C-B-R and easel. That's E E A S E S A L. Yeah. I was almost I was a spelling bee runner up. CBR and Easel. Okay. Um, so because I wanted to be just because, like, that's one of my uh, that's one of my tisms. Here's the thing about it: uh, the state of California was actually pioneers in road building, um, going back in the 20s and 30s, and they quickly mm-hmm. discovered that certain soil types were not conducive to supporting heavy weight loads, like um, sticky, gooey clays that, when wet, turn into toothpaste, and like muskeg, which is like frozen ground that thaws out when you drive on it, like up in like Canada and Alaska and shit. You know? And so they start um, doing these um, load-bearing tests on different soil types, and they then assigned um, numeric values to how much weight that particular soil type can support 
without adding aggregates, which is like, you know, crushed stone, gravel. That, that's what the prison labor is for. They swing hammers. They make the big rocks into small rocks, and then you put it on the road. Um, so anyways, uh, adding aggregate to your soil types will increase your CBR value. That's your California bearing ratio for load bearing uh, characteristics. And then ESOL. CBR if you're nasty. CBR, that's right. Um, and then your ESOLs is your equivalent single axle load. So uh, we can calculate how much wear and tear uh, a bituminous or, or Portland cement pavement will endure by the weight per axle. So, um, and that's your equivalent single axle load. So, for example, an overweight semi that's pushing 85 gross tons is equivalent to. I think uh, like 16,000 regular um, car or pickup trucks passing that same piece of pavement. Oh, wow. That's how much, that's that's how much damage. Um, yeah, one, one 85,000 gross ton semi overweight passing over that stretch of pavement does the same wear and tear as about 16,000 regular vehicles. Well, I mean, it makes sense if it's overweight, yeah. And that, that's why they have way stations on the interstate, because overweight trucks fuck the pavement for everybody. Well, yeah. Forever. Until because the, the, the increase in the, the weight is, uh, it's not linear, it's exponential. Well, for one thing, when you have overweight loads going uh, on these uh, highways, uh, first of all, the gross uh, gross tons of Oregon. Oh, God. That's a good one, six. I got to give you credit there. That's that. Wow. I salute you, sir. So uh, the first thing to go in the pavement is the. Uh, is that like a bag of dicks? Well, you see, the pavement is only as strong as the ground underneath. And so if the CBR values underneath, because the, here's the problem with using CBR values when you build a highway or you build a road. They do it just good enough. So they're like, well, we need to get this up to a four out of 10. And that should be good enough. We'll just, you know, and then we need to use eight inches of stone and four inches of blacktop. So they, in fact, they only get it up to about a three. They only put in about five inches of dense grade aggregate, crushed stone, rocks, pebbles. And then they put the uh, bituminous pavements in in three courses. That's the black toppy stuff. Um, and, you know, you've got your course grade and your finish grades. So I'm, I'm an engineer and a surveyor. I've, I've designed and oversaw and, you know, from start to finish, design, build. That's me out there with the fucking telescope on the tripod and then going over there and drilling a hole in the black top and making sure that they didn't fuck me on the black top because it's supposed to have four inches, asshole. It's only got two and a half inches supposed to have eight inches of rock it's only got five inches of rock and i Damn. can see when the fucking semi trucks drive over it the ground is already pumping on both sides of the fill and so no no matter what you put on top of this fill it's going to collapse i don't put i don't care if you pour 18 inches thick of rebar fucking concrete when you've got it pumping on top of clay mud motherfucker's going to crack and make potholes I don't care if it's 18 inches thick of fucking concrete. If you build on top of shit, doesn't matter what you put on top of the shit. Your road still going to turn to shit. It's poop. That's right. It's all about the foundation. Forget the easels. The ground's pumping because your CVR values. All right, so there you go. There's your... I had to explain order. that to my realtor. There's your I was surprised I had Jonah to do has that. Now explain to everyone why are there potholes? Why do roads in America suck? Because they cheat on the gravel, they cheat on the subgrade, they cheat on the fucking blacktop, they cheat on the fucking concrete, they don't cut enough creases, they don't tie enough fucking rebar. I don't know how many fucking concrete pours I've come in. We're really going to pour a fucking concrete uh, driving surface. And I look down. And only every third fucking rebar crossing is wired together. Fuck, man. Everything is grab ass. 
Everything yep. is fast and fucking furious as the ATF giving guns to the Mexican cartels. Yep. Oh, I'm getting off track. But it's just as fast and cheap and dirty as you possibly can. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Get cheap and dirty with my Oregon. There you go. Well, I'm only here for, for the shift, Yona. So I don't know who's going to take over after I'm done. I mean, I'll do my best while I'm here. Yeah. I that's just, uh, uh, that's your, your modern society wow. in the United States of America. Because, again, it would not be possible to merge Canada, the United States, and Mexico into any sort of conglomerate if one uh, or even two of those countries are vastly more wealthy now, imagine, than one of the others. Imagine if you decide to build a brand new um, <laughs> state-of-the-art railway system in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. We'll call it Tren Maya, based on true events. Um, and, uh, in fact, it, the Tren Maya largely is a refurbishment and, in some places, track realignment where they've taken out some curves and stuff. But basically, it's an ancient rail line that they've modernized and taken some of the sharp curves out of and put in the overhead electrification for the kilovolts so they can run electric train sets on it. And um, it's using the modern concrete sleepers, or what we would call railroad ties, <coughs> concrete. and the rails are affixed to the sleepers with clips. Well, they're, they're all supposed to be, in theory. But when you're in Mexico and you're trying to get this thing built, because AMLO wants it built before the end of his term. Right. And you, and Which you is want coming to soon, right? It. Right, because the, 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 it's about to become Jew Mexico, or Juxico, as I like That's to call right. Juxico. Did you know I predicted the winner of the yeah. Mexican election? Over a year ago. Over a year ago. That's when, right. When you were still in, in the pre of in, uh, yeah. Hurricane Otis, the eight-hour hurricane. Still uh, in the land of endless summer. I said, you know what? I, that girl's going to be president one day. Yep. She's been tapped on the shoulder and yep. the stars over her head. Um, her so, name was fucking everywhere. It was unreal. I've never seen anything like that before. It turns out that they were only clipping on every other railroad tie when they first laid the rail in. Well, yeah, that's how you, uh, that's how you skim money off the top. Because somebody was supposed to go back and then put in all the clips. And when I say every other one, I'm talking about they alternated. They would put one on the right side and then skip a tie. And then on the next one, they would put one in on the left side and then skip a tie. So are they you, had guys are you walking trying, on each side. Are you trying and to guess tell what me? happened? The rails where they weren't clipped all the way in on a curve and a train went around the curve and the rails just popped out, which then made the train. Um, what do they call that when it leaves the rails? Oh, derailment. Derailment, yeah. Right, because... D means from. Right. right? Yeah, so derailment. You're, you're That's going it. from like, the rail. Like, like a Norfolk away Southern from train the rail. In, in East yeah. Palestine, Ohio, full of... Um, D, you're and derailing. And you're not enrailing, like you're derailing. Derailing, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, the, so there's that. L luckily... The, the, the Transamericano, when AMLO wrote that, I was very worried about that. We talked about that in previous episodes, and um, that went off without a hitch, yeah. although it was much, it was postponed four times, but it finally happened. Luckily, Fifth AMLO time is was the charm. Luckily, AMLO was not writing the Trend Maya. Um, and I'm hoping that after this derailment, that maybe they're going to go to that um, warehouse that's got all those cardboard boxes filled with um, rail clips 
No, the, all those rail exist. clips are supposed to be clipping the rails. No, nope. the thing. And you know, what? hey, let's send Juan nope. and Valentino back out that all main that line. money is in somebody's pocket. There and, is no warehouse. Let, there is no pallets of boxes of clips. There's no none of that. Probably somebody bought a lot of cocaine with that money. That would be my guess. Yeah, this is we're we're talking about Merida. You know, this happened right outside of Merida, which uh, for Americans, um, about an hour west of Cancun and Cozumel. Okay, Playa del oh, okay. Carmen. Yeah, hour west. Yeah, you know, going into um, the the meaty part of of the Mexico territory type stuff. You know, before you get to the narrow part, which is um, the Strait of um, Teotihuacan, you know, right. Tabasco state. But right. anyway, I'm already losing people. Yeah. With the spicy Mexican down geography. there. Very spicy. Um, but uh, yeah, Trent yeah. Maya derailed. And then there was the crazy boat pilot in Charleston Harbor. You uh, South Carolina? About that too, in South Carolina. That was like today or yesterday or something, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the they closed all there? traffic on that harbor bridge because apparently we don't have tugboats anymore. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Oh, and right? even better, his you throttle have the, was You stuck. have the scamdemic, so the tugboat's got to go. This guy is, somehow has his throttle stuck at full fucking throttle, mm-hmm. and he's tearing toward the fucking I-26 bridge at That's like... Right. Uh, 17 knots. Or Got something. a fucking date with destiny that man does. Are you going to interrupt him? Motherfucker stone ripped tide wakes on both sides of his fucking ass. God. She was fucking wide open. Yeah. Wow. Stuxnet will do that. Yeah. Wow. That's and the been, thing of it is, these ships that 10 are years not. Ago. The, most of these ships are so fucking crude. They're like, 40s, 50s, 1960s, like, there ain't no fucking computer system where somebody can hack and fucking steer the fucking ship, man. There's, it's taken like 10 people doing, you know, century-old fucking shipmate tasks to get this ancient fucking rust bucket relics to move around. Unless you're on one of the more modern, like, super-duper tanker ships. And even then, like, the, the, the fuel that they put in these ships Got all kinds of shit in it, man. And so they've got, they, they put all these different screens in because there's like chunks of wood and sawdust and all this other stuff that they cut the marine diesel with. Um, and so uh, it's so dirty and so bad. A lot of it's very high sulfur content that they keep two gas tanks on ships at sea. The, the, the port gas in the open sea. Fuel, you know the, the 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 port diesel and then the sea diesel because you can't you know you can't burn the sea diesel when you're in port because you know it's literally right. smells like crack and burning tires when you're burning that shit because god knows what all diesel is the least right. refined It'll cause fuel. A ruckus diesel is not a refined fuel like in the echelon of like you know propane and butane and gasoline and kerosene where you it's clear and you can see through it and it's pretty no that is diesel not looks, diesel. Diesel looks like President Biden's pants at a D-Day commemoration ceremony. But yes, that is accurate. I would say absolutely. You know, I saw um, a map earlier this week. I think it was actually like maybe the day after the Mexican presidential election, which is kind of wild that they have their elections on Sunday. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever, however you want to do it, that's fine, I guess. But it Wouldn't was it be better to have it on a day when everyone's working. And that way, if you can't get off work, fuck you, you don't get to vote. Well, I thought everybody spent Sundays in church, but I guess not. I guess they're not doing that as much as they used to but either. Church but, isn't all day long. You either hit, you hit the polls before or after. Well, yeah, but then you got to go and you got to get something to eat with everybody. And then grandma usually like her bunions start hurting and she wants to go home and it's just always just a mess anyway 
So this map, they were they were laying out. There's been like a hundred assassinations of politicians in Mexico over the course of the last twelve months. Whoa. And they were yeah, and they were laying out like the the locations by state of where all these assassinations had taken place. And I was looking at the map, and I was like, "Holy shit! There's a bunch of them in Guerrero. That's the state I was living in." Yeah, that's Guerrero's Acapulco. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And Guerrero means warrior in Spanish. So it makes sense. Yeah, I guess it does. I mean, you know, uh, the word for war in Spanish is uh, guerra. G-U-E-R-R-I. Like, um, guerra mundial, world war. Anyway. Or L- L- how about um, la segunda guerra mundial, right? The second world war. But mm. now we're in la tercera guerra Mundial, a ver, así. Anyway, yeah, go, basically. Go ahead, yeah. basically. Viva Guerrero. Los Guerreros Mexicanos. But yeah, it just, it, it surprised me. Because looking at all the, all the little clusters, I would not have expected Guerrero to have that many. Now, you know, something else happened under AMLO. Uh, and Something, that is a lot of a lot of shit happened. A under lot AMLO. of things, but the thing I want to bring out right now is the fact that fucking silver tongued devil is what he is. The federal police force has shrunk, and at the same time, the federal military police has quadrupled in size, to where now um, enforcement of the law by and large across Mexico is affected by um el ejercito mexicano ejercito mexicano or um Mexican army mm-hmm. you know BDUs all over the place guns. the interesting thing is even though there's four times as many guns on the street for the state of Mexico now across the country Enforcement is one third of what it was with the smaller federal force when it came to arrests and detainments and ticket writing and prosecution. So prosecutions are at an all time low. Well, Tickets yeah, are at an all time low. Nobody wants to mess with the military. Yeah. That, and they that see was the, the vibe and, that I got. It's yeah. like, all right, they're here to, you know, enforce the peace or, or whatever. If you get out of line, it's probably that's who you're going to end up dealing with. And nobody wanted that. So, it, and, you know, in a way, it, like, it may look authoritarian, but it actually produces the intended effect. But to be fair, if you go to the case of um, the Ayotzinapa um, Escuela Normal, that's the uh, teacher's college at Ayotzinapa, for the 43 uh, teacher uh, college students uh, who were uh, just disappeared. Um, and, uh, you know, that it, as we, it took forever to get details to come out. But as I recall, the details that came out, because that was in the Mexican city of Iguala, Hmm. where that happened, the Ayotzinapa school and, and you know, uh, Los 43, the, the, the 43 missing. And there's a huge movement still to this day across Mexico demanding answers and accountability for the fact that the Mexican federal police had colluded with the local cartels and that they were on a bus and that there was drugs stashed under the seats of the bus, and but the kids didn't know about it. And then... Oh, shit, sure. that's in Guerrero, account. too. Yeah, yeah, that's in Guerrero. I think I Iguala. might have driven through Iguala. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not far from Acapulco. But anyways, um, that that is still a scandal to this day in Mexico, the Ayotzinapa 43. And there's constantly memorials and parades with, you know, the surviving parents and relatives of these 43 missing and dead that were basically killed by the Mexican federal police. Oh, yeah, I bet I did drive killed. through Iguala, because it's just south of uh, Tashco. Uh-huh. Yep. I know I drove through there. Um, and so, 
That's one of the reasons why AMLO was able to shrink the size of the federal police because of this ongoing Ayotzinapa scandal with what happened in Iguala and Guerrero State. It gave uh, AMLO, what would you call it, the, the political cover to, to dial down the fund, to basically defund and shrink the federal police. But as he's doing that with the left hand, motherfucker with the right hand quadruples the size of the Mexican army. So it, it's a three-card money. You know, follow the ball under the cup, uh, Drizzle. I mean, fuck, man. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, AMLO is not this hero no, that he's made no, out No, not even he's, close. Not even close. He is a fucking criminal. He's actually worse than Lula da Silva, and that's, which that's is again, a lot. That's not me saying it. That's people of Mexico telling me, yeah. don't trust what you see on that fucking screen. That man is dirty. But he does also have his supporters because I have heard people talk good of him as well. And what that tells oh, me is he he's a, a politician. Club. So he, has, he, I mean, is, he is open to the highest bidder. It was, he was like a rock star when he went to New York City. Yeah. Going out on the balcony and just throngs of people with the... Well, with that the means he's, he's intelligence linked then. If oh, they're, if they're yeah. doing a big production for them whenever they go to another yeah. country, that's intelligence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can say the same thing for um, Enrique Peña Nieto. You can say the same thing for Senor Coca-Cola, Vicente Fox. I mean, going back, I, you know what? We're, we're going to leave the Mexican politics alone. I'm kind of getting bored with it. Although I do love that Mexican word, marijuana. But um, mm -hmm. Mexican politics is just basically a story of um, corrupción. Yeah. Muchas veces. Muchas Pretty much. Veces. Lots of... Just... <sighs> and, and it's all dominated by U.S. But the federal I, level, yeah. The, at the federal level, like, it's just amazing when you I go mean, to It Mexico. always has been. That's, that's basically what the Mexican-American War was all about, is There's, making sure that we could get our in into the federal structure of Mexico so that we could exert our influence on them at any given time because we have this heavy monetary investment in the power structure that the media calls the cartels, you know, which runs the, the drug trafficking business on this side of the planet. Were you so, stunned or shocked? A little, Were you surprised little bit of an investment in any way there. when you first got down to the land of endless summer there in Mexico? Was it kind of a culture shock or a surprise to you? That there were so many fucking other Americans and Canadians and English speakers there in Mexico. <laughs> I'm uh, sure you probably had some idea before you went there, but being there and experiencing it for yourself is different. But that's my question. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> it depends on what you mean by so many. Like, I would say it's at least for, for the people that I would come into contact with on a daily basis, you know, just out going around doing my thing, you know, grocery shopping or whatever. It was maybe, maybe 10% of the population. Because here's the other thing, too, is it's a resort town, right? right. Ever since so the has, 1970s, it's been a resort town. And even so it has though, an established gringo landia already. Correct. Correct. There are already yep. people who were traveling to Acapulco for pleasure from the United States, from Canada, uh, even Australia. You know, yeah. people from Europe traveled to Acapulco because, again, it was one of the destinations yep. at one time. So it has that established reputation. So they come and go all the time. But it you, was interesting. You, 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 knew. you can replicate that pattern, though, if you go down from Acapulco through East Tapa, through Zihuatanejo, going yeah. on down that Pacific coast, or going on up the coast to the end of the Baja at um, Cabo San Lucas. You know, again, with these resort towns, they have 
because they've been tourist destination for so long, um, they, they, they've formed their own Gringolandias, which are basically enclaves of expats. Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. But I mean, you know, like you knew when you started seeing uh, the Canadians, especially the French Canadians showing up because you can't miss them in Acapulco. Yeah. They stand out like a sore fucking thumb. It's hilarious. They're so white. Yes. They're so white. They're so ah. loud. Very polite. Very, very polite people, but real fucking annoying. Um, but you, when you would see them start showing up in like the restaurants and stuff, you're like, oh, okay, it's, it's tourist season again. The only thing funnier than hearing a Quebecer speak English is hearing them they, speak I'm Spanish. Like Castellano. Oh my God. Oh my God. More Mezcal, please. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, another round of Mezcal. Yeah. And, and some um, Modelo Negros, please. Um, but uh, it, it's stunning to me going to Mexico with the Oxos everywhere. It's basically like a Seven Eleven type joint, you know, twenty four seven gas station. It's better than Seven um, Eleven. <laughs> way better. Oxo. O X X O. Um, and then of course, it's like a hug and a kiss, got, and a kiss and a hug. You know. What really fucks you up is when you get on one of these toll freeways, these toll oh, roads. And they have the like agua frescas. And, and, you know, you got ramps and everything, and you pull off this at, at freeway ramp, and even though the signs are in Spanish, there's a fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken, there's a fucking Pizza Hut, there's a McDonald's, yeah, there's a Walmart. Fuck all that You're shit. like, fuck all what that. the fuck? It's like I'm already in the United States. I mean, that's there. But I'm in there. fucking Aguas Calientes on the 57 heading for Durango. What the fuck? Man. Yeah, but you're going to get better food from Fernanda, who's got like the, the rickety old taco stand in front of the KFC. Oh, of course. And That's it's going to it's going to cost you like 10 times less and be 10 yeah, times better. It'll cost you like four pesos, which is like 80 cents or like my first apartment uh, a couple blocks down the street. There was a spot. That's literally all it was, was a spot. It wasn't a storefront. It wasn't a stand. There was nothing there. These people would show up. They would uh, throw down a table and they would sell pork sandwiches for like, I don't know, it's like 25 pesos or something. Oh, Dirt man. fucking it, cheap. And it's the it's best like goddamn the, the, pork sandwich you've ever had in your life. It was like the, the slow roast barbecue yep. pork, right? Yep. Like pulled pork style. And they're but, fucking but the huge, man. Oh my God. They had that in Cuenca and they called it pernil. P-E-R-N-I-L. Pernil, yeah. which is pulled pork. I that defy anyone in the United hard. States to find something like that. But, um, God damn it, now I can't think of what they're called. What, what are the things that they sell that are wrapped in the corn husk? Drawing a fucking oh. line. Tamales. Tamal. Yeah, tamal. Tamales. Oh, my God, dude. So good. Oh, my God. Like, like I'd had tamales before, but I, 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 I you know, we're... Going up, we're already in the Zapatista zone where I got my, my black hat um, over there. Everyone knows Yona's black hat, my leather hat. And and we're so we're outside of um, San Cristobal de las Casas. And, uh, <coughs> and there's a lady on the side of the road, just like a little pull-off on the side of the road, a little gravel lot, you know, like maybe where you'd have a fruit stand or something. And she's just got like a little taco cart. Uh, and some buckets with towels over them, uh, and, and tamales for two pesos, two fucking pesos, which is like Nothing. forty cents. It's like dirt. Forty cents per tamale. So I get two tamales, and I open it up, and fresh man, just fucking steam cooked. It's got fucking whole pieces of lima beans and like corn and. It's an entire fucking meal, man. And then yeah, it's man. got like chicken and the chicken is really small. It's like whole pieces of chicken. And then you see like around there, like their chickens are like normal, small chickens. And like, and that's what right. I realized. Not the most giant the, fucking genetic monstrosities. Yeah. Most of the chicken blob meat in the United States is fake bloated chicken meat with water added and everything else. But so... Anyways, so Probably me and so the old lady. After you cook it, me and the old lady. We had, I had two tamales, 
She had two tamales. So that's uh it's eight pesos. Uh yeah, well uh it was two pesos per yeah, so that's eight pesos. So we're up to uh uh about a dollar and thirty cents. And then we both had cups of pozole, which is the, the chocolate drink. Yeah. Um you know, um no, no, no. I had pozole and she had the horchata, which is like the white cinnamon drink. Um horchata. Um so and the drinks were uh two pesos. So, so now we're up to twelve pesos. Twelve, 12 pesos. Damn for lunch. Damn. Twelve pesos. Which is just barely over two dollars for two people. Where can you eat in the United States and have your food and your you drink can't. and everything for two people for You cannot. <clears throat> impossible. Absolutely impossible. Cents? You could feed four people for less than five bucks? <laughs> well, I mean, it, at this I point, really miss Yona, those cigarette prices. Oh, my God. It, I bought will, five cartons back before around. I left Mexico. It'll come back around. Once they establish the, the new economic dominion, uh, you know, we'll... we'll well, it'll be like the 1920s all over again. Oh, man. I would love, like, for me, I want to be by the West Coast, but I want to be in that higher altitude. That way I get to see the water and the blue ocean, but I'm up at, like, you know, three, 4,000 feet above sea level to where I'm not getting that fucking roasting-ass heat. I'm getting them cool hmm. Sierra Madre breezes. Because, you know, you get that high in elevation, and it just don't ever really get that high when you get so high up in elevation. Um, and so it's like endless fall weather where it's just 75 every single day. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's just room temperature every day. That's what Cuenca was like. I could deal with that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like uh, I like my heat. but. I could deal with 75 every day. It was wild. There wasn't a single fucking building in that town that had air conditioning or heaters. But you don't need it. Because the climate year-round is like 75 degrees. Room temperature. <laughs> yeah. And, it and it occasionally... took me a while to figure out that there were no, there, there were no heaters in any of the, the buildings that I ever went into in Acapulco. Yeah. Because they don't need them. It would be pointless. It turns out a lot of places in Texas don't have heaters. And then we started getting these freak Texas um, freezes where, like, oh, we're going to get more. All the way down to fucking, like, Brownsville and Harlingen and South Padre, they're getting fucking, you know, 20, 25 degrees for like three, four days in a row. And then they're, you know, all of a sudden, um, Texas um, Utility Commission and everything, and they're gouging, and there's been just epic failures of the Texas power grid in these freezes that have hit Texas. Because, they again, I mean, a lot of Texas is desert, man. They just don't expect fucking Some of it Canadian is. tundra frost to hit below San Antonio and all the way down to fucking Corpus and shit. That's crazy. I mean, it's one thing to hit Amarillo, but totally well, different thing when you're talking mm, about, you know, below um, Corpus. Anyway. It's unusual, but it's not unprecedented. You know, it, it has happened before. Problem is, oh. we just, we went through a, a, a phase <laughs> where it was rather warm for quite a long time. And now it looks like we're we're swinging back to the other direction where slowly and gradually it's going to get colder than what we have been used to to having weather-wise. We were already heading into another ice age. Despite the greenwashed eugenic propaganda that we're fed. Um right. shout out to Tom Cooper in the Rumble chat. 
pork or dank with some green sauce. Bro. There you go. When I had the pernil pulled pork for the first time in Cuenca, Ecuador, um, it was with the salsa verde, the, the green sauce. Yeah. Um, uh, what well, you have, to, uh, you have to remember, Yona, back in 2021, in tomato. January, I think it was. January Tomatillo. of 2021. That's what they are. Yes, Tomatillo. Tomatillo. Yeah, go ahead. Um, January of 2021, we had the Tonga eruption, which ejected uh, so much moisture into the atmosphere that it was basically like adding 10% more moisture to our atmosphere. And, and it has a taken a while of, uh, for that to circulate all over the planet, <laughs> but you would think adding more moisture into the atmosphere <laughs> is going to create more precipitation, right? It's going also, to create more ice at the poles. It should have the effect of cooling the planet down. It also has the Eventually. cooling effect because of the particulate matter that it ejects during eruption, which literally reflects light back to space from the sun. Right. That cooling effect, because it makes the atmosphere denser because of all the sulfur dioxide and all the other shit that's just spewing out of its fucking caldera. Anyway. <laughs> God, this is some danky shit. What the fuck is this called? <laughs> God. Well, this this is probably the time for you to report into Biscotti then. Uh, how high is Grandy, the Yona? Grandy Guava. Oh, how high is the Yona? Hmm. If he's still watching, I don't know. I gotta think here. I haven't seen any action in the chat from Biscotti for a while, so. We might need to send somebody to check on him. Do a wellness check. We'll call up the local state enforcers and have them do a wellness check. Gee, I like I, a I'm good fascist. I, you, normally, I just have something to just roll off the tongue, but uh, I know I stumped you. Right now, I this is a different kind of high. I I don't know what to compare it to. It's it's like. I'm hiding where I've never hide before, Captain Kirk. Um, I'm going to say right now I'm higher than the uh, eucalyptian moons of Eris in the Kuiper Belt. Somebody fact check uh, that. Which is beyond the orbit of Neptune and Pluto. So uh, there you go. Higher than the entire fucking solar system. Well, there you go. Oh, my God. What? How the fuck is it almost 1130, dude? How did an hour and a half just go by? <laughs> well, you spent... Uh, we we spent a good deal of time talking about Mexican politics. Which I think is hilarious because neither one of us really knows a damn thing about Mexican politics. But uh, hopefully the folks watching in, in Mexico appreciated that. Various, uh, various me, countries most, do check in. The single most interesting character in Mexican politics, without question in my mind, has to be General Santana. General Santa Ana, who's probably most famous for being the bad guy, taking on Colonel Travis, who's done scratched a, a line, drawn a line in the sand with the sword and said, Who's with me? Who's going to help defend the Alamo? Cross this line. And so he's got, what, Sam Bowie and Davy Crockett and everybody all holed up in the Alamo there in yeah, Big Hot County and San Antonio. God, what a bell ringer. Got my nose running. <laughs> so San Ana's the bad guy leading the Mexican army and kicks ass at the Alamo. That one really got a hold of you, didn't it? This shit is. 26.9%. Fuck. Almost 27% weed. Um, so Santa Ana ended up running off to Cuba. Because, you know, he, he fell out of favor with the Mexican public many times. And uh As when, you do. when General Some Scott Some of them are assholes, you know. Uh General Scott invaded, you know, during uh, Polk's War invasion of the United States has invaded Mexico for 
six times now. Newsflash. Uh, but uh, sure, the, we'll go with that. The, the Mexican American War officially uh, is before uh, the War of Texan Independence and before the American Civil War. So we're mm-hmm. talking eighteen. 18- 40, I, I don't remember the year, but anyways, that's when General Scott lands at um, Veracruz on the Gulf there and marches his army all the way to Mexico City. They kill the hero boys at Chapultepec and uh, end up taking um, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Ooh, 1846 Arizona, 1846 to California. 1848. So it was not 1848. Son of a bitch! Yeah. Son of a bitch, I got it right. Damn straight. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. And I'm not even reading this off of Wikipedia, no D. Suck my balls. Right off the top of my fucking head. No, but God I will drop that link in the notes for uh, for folks that want to fact check it for themselves. So yeah, so it was 1848, and you have uh, Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant fighting side by side through the city of Puebla on their way to Mexico City. Yeah, shout out to the fam. And just 15 years later, they would be respectively leading the armies of the North and the South. Ulysses S. Grant leading the Army of the North, uh, General Robert E. Lee leading the Army of the South, the Confederate Force. Uh, but in the Mexican-American War in 1848, when they took Mexico City. Um, Damn. Mexico had, had been independent like 20 years. Yeah, yeah, that, that's 20 years after the Grito by Benito. Benito Juarez, the Grito, the, 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 the cry for freedom. The Grito heard are all around the world. Grito. So, um, let's see here. So. General Scott invades, and Santa Ana hears about it, so Santa Ana runs back to Mexico. He's like, hey, I'll I'll form an army. I'll defend and protect Mexico City. And so he was the one at Puebla fighting the Americans and lost. Um, But Santa Ana died rich, and his uh, descendants today are some of the richest people in Mexico Mm. because... Do they still go General, by Santa Ana? Yeah, uh, Santa Ana is the last name. And uh, General Santa Ana had massive land holdings with chicory trees. And he was tinkering with chicory trees and discovered that they were very gummy. And so he made a candy out of the chicory trees called chiclets. You can still buy chiclets today. C H I C L E T S chiclets santa yeah, and they're not made out of chicory anymore are they chicory is one of the sources of bubble gum general santa anna fucking discovered or invented bubble gum and holds many of the patents on bubble gum and so After kicking ass at the Alamo and then getting his ass kicked in Puebla and the Americans taking Mexico City and then carting off um, Oregon, California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico. Anyways, um, Santa Ana went went on to um, blow bubbles into millions of dollars or pesos. Chewing gum. Now you know. Anyways, I think I talk. I think I mentioned that before on a previous Get Back Carter about Santa Anna and the and the chewing gum connection there. But um, anyways, I don't know if you did. Maybe you did. I don't know. We've done I, a shit ton of these now. Yeah, I mean, we're so deep into it. Literally, had to take a bathroom break. That's right, potty break. Just remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever have a speaking engagement, uh, pro tip, about five minutes before you're supposed to start, go ahead and take a bathroom break. Yeah, just do Just that. to be on the safe side. Now, did you see the video where Biden farted in Georgia? 
Yes, I, I believe I did. I also saw one where uh, AOC farted, allegedly. Yeah, here it is. Biden farts loud. No, not that. Not that guy. Not you. No, no, no. I hate it when they say, "Here's the clip," and then they fucking blah 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 for like two minutes, and then you don't even get the whole clip when they finally show yep. it. Oh god damn it! That's called predatory content. Yeah, because it preys on your attention. I believe our category is uh, ludicrous. I think that's the one in the drop down I'm supposed to select. That's the one I select. Right, I don't know. There we go. I've got it queued up. I found the video. Let's go over here. Oh, shit. Are we doing this again? Screen share. Biden farts loudly. Oh, no. Hey, I, you know, I'm keeping the theme here. I'm keeping to the theme. We're, you know, we're keeping it on script here. All right. All right. Let's see if I got that. All right. Okay. Uh, the the fart is right at the first second, so you got to listen close. Uh, and then after he rips the fart, you know, as he's shaking the former leader of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC. does he fart again? Uh, yes. Um, and everyone thinks it's hilarious, and and he and then he realizes that everyone is laughing at him, and he doesn't think it's cool, and he makes. Biden, sad face. All right, I'm ready. It's very sad. Poor guy. Poor fella. Just shit your pants loudly. Georgia Democrats, please. So if you didn't catch it, I'm going to play this again with the volume up and at half speed. This was President Joe Biden at a Georgia campaign meeting farting very loudly. The entire room heard it and they burst into laughter. So check it out again. Wow, I heard it. That was a very wet, ripped fart. That there was a lot coming out with that fart. Yeah, that was that was more than just a fart, folks. God. Okay, I'm I wonder is that is that also how he lures children into the Oval Office? Do you ever you see that video of him yeah. just like going up and grabbing a couple of kids and taking them away from the parents? Just, we're just going over here. Way where you can't see anything. That's that's your commander in chief, ladies and gentlemen. Or who, um, who I affectionately refer to as President Scratch and Sniff. Right, and and his son Hunter Biden has him stored on his cell phone under the contact um, Pedo Pete. I can't even uh, make this shit uh, up, man. Uh, I can't. I can't even. I, oh my god, dude. Oh my god. If Manly P. Hall were here today, what what do you think he would say? <laughs> and you, and you saw that where I edited that in, right? You saw that on the video, right there after he said, "Hey, all uh, you kids, come up here and get behind me." And then he says, "Oh, there's my daughter Ashley. Hey, come on up here with me, Ash." And then the and then it cuts to. Corn pop was a bad dude. I stuck that in there. I stuck that in there. And and she never came to the stage. Because, you know, she wasn't in the shower. <laughs> Do you blame her? So, if I get this right, she was staying at a B&B, &B, an Airbnb, yeah. and had written the diary and left the diary there. Yep. And then the people that actually own the Airbnb reached out to James O'Keefe, who then took it. And that led to Project Veritas freaking the fuck out because the feds came and descended upon him, which tells you that it's totally not authentic because, you know, they would totally do that if it was fake. Um. <laughs> right. Well, Where's the story, it at? The story I Give heard. Give us it back. The story I heard was that 
uh, it wasn't the owners of the Airbnb that found it. It was the next person that stayed at that that place that yeah. found it. Yeah, uh, that's and right. And ended up getting it to, to James O'Keefe, which... I don't, the whole thing that, that I question about it is if you're going to come into the possession of Ashley Biden's diary and you read through it and you see what's in there and you're like, holy shit. Like there's some, some serious like uh, crimes being committed within the bounds of this family. Who should I take this to? James O'Keefe is is the first thing that comes to your mind? Are you fucking kidding me? I've often wondered, I've often wondered, of all the different people that have worked in PV, uh, uh, Project Veritas, um, with O'Keefe, well, used to be his organization, he's on his own now, but anyways, I'm getting off track, so he's famous for setting up these CEOs or other employees and whatever organization or government no, it's or whatever. underlings, usually. It's the dumb uh, ones. The dumb ones right. don't become CEOs. But it's almost always like they're on a date and they're at a bar or they're at a restaurant and somebody thinks they're going to get laid or get their dick sucked. There's the innuendo going on. And I've always wondered. Yeah, because men are stupid. I've always wondered, man. There's bound to have been a couple of cases where actual sparks happened. And even though they're supposed to be punking them like for Project Veritas, they were like, what? but I, I actually like this douchebag in the members only jacket with the bald spot. I think I'm going to fuck him. I think I'm in love. Well, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't like him like him, but yeah. But he's got all this money and I can get it. So I'm going to fuck him. And fuck Project Veritas. I'm wondering if that's ever happened. I'm just, just a weird thought. Who knows, man? I, I, don't, I don't think you can trust anyone who's in the circle of influence of Eric Prince. Not I really. I just don't think you can. I don't think you can give that person no. the benefit of the doubt. It just doesn't really hit for me when those Eric Prince commercials come on Rumble where he says, hey, I'm just a regular American like you folks trying to make a living. Like, bro, man, you're a fucking citizen of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia with passport to that third world backwater fucking barbarian state. You've also got citizenship and a passport for the United Arab Emirates. Oh, yeah, who just Another introduced CBDCs. State. And he's also got a passport for yet another barbarian third world fucking state. That would be Israel. And then he's got a U.S. passport. Go fuck off, Eric Prince, and all your Michigan money. And your sister, Betsy DeBoss, too. Both of you can fucking suck it. Pieces of shit. Traitors to America. Traitors to America. You know, it's funny. One of the podcasts that I listen to regularly, it's uh, probably most most of the people watching right now or listening to the replay probably never heard of it before. Will probably never listen to it. Uh, oh. But it's actually done by a guy who lives in my hometown. I did not know that until I had left and was oh. already in Mexico. It's called the Farm. Uh, it's done by a guy who goes by the handle Recluse, but he has some absolutely wild shit on his podcast from time to time. Just so happens this week, he did an interview with a former Blackwater employee. And it was interesting to find out that the majority of the people that work for Blackwater, they were all about the, the, the hookers and the blow. That's what it was all about. What a fucking surprise. Hello, North Carolina. Who's up for some coke and whores, Raleigh? Anyway. Yeah. Blackwater took its name from the Blackwater River in North Carolina, close to the facility. And then later it was Academy and then Z with an XE. And 
now he's hawking something on Rumble. Fuck off, Eric Prince. Well, he's got a he's got a freedom phone for you, Yona. He, yeah, that's right. Eric Prince is going to protect your data from yeah. the government and big tech. Yona, I know. I almost got all the way through it. I almost got all the way through it. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> Fucking clown show. Leave it to Eric Prince to like, sell a fuck, wooden man. What the fuck Eric is Prince, wrong with people? He's going to sell a wooden horse on wheels to the city of Troy, Drizzle. There you go. Hey, you guys. When, wanna... when do the riots start? That's, that's what I want to know. When, when do the fucking riots start? How much more are people going to put up with? I don't think it's much. Oh, shout out to uh, Shagwanoxi, Lone Star, for putting the uh, lanky link for uh, Recluse in the Farm uh, oh, nice. Spotify link on the Rumble in the live chat. Blam! There it is. That's right. We have the best listeners on the planet. Wow, my Fact brain. Fact check that. I dare you. My brain just took a shit, man. Yeah. Fuck, I'm baked as fuck. Well, it's good. I mean, we've only got like 15 minutes left. You gonna be able to finish the show? Do oh I need, yeah. Do I need to pull in Dylan from the the Odyssey stream to finish the show for you? Bro, I'm I'm just really like I I I don't know. Like I had a few things. I was my my brain's just it, this is your brain on drugs, folks. Scram. Well, I, 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 I learned it by watching everything. you. Um, of course, consume. Oh yeah, consumer spending. I did remember. Consumer spending is way down. Walmart's freaking out. Well, from what I understand, the out. consumers are way down too. Uh, yeah, you know, like everybody's broke. Apparently. Oh no, I just meant like the people, you know, been dropping dead. The people that used to spend money ha- have died. So it kind of makes sense that consumer spending is down, right? So we shared the uh, the Biden video at the beginning, and then I this morning, in fact, yeah, it was this morning before work. I managed to crap out a new video for the remix of um, the Just Fucking Wired remix of um, Wired to the Max. Oh yeah, which features. Um, Apparently, was it the new number six that gave him nicknames? Because there's three stars in that video. And I think he called it um, Vanna White. Um, oh, shit, now I'm going to have to go look in the thing. I know the last one, the dude he called Pupils. <laughs> Where are these nicknames at? I got to go back up through the chat. So let's see here. Uh, oh, I went too far. Yeah, I have there no he idea is. what you're talking about. Uh, the well, I guess. Oh, it's eleven forty. We have we got time, so I'll find that. Um, okay, there we go. There's the first mention. Uh, Man, I'm too high. It's all just a blur. There it is again. Uh, probably okay, a good Lord. idea to not take another potty break again for a while. Bro. So somebody get that memo to Joe Biden so he can stop shitting his pants in public on live television. No shit. Maybe that, it was Lone great. Star. Was it Lone Star that had the nicknames for the... Uh, oh, maybe nice. it was the truck that gets the dumpsters is here. They're early tonight. They usually don't come around until like one o'clock in the morning. Wow. Our Wake dumpster, me up after I've been asleep for 15 minutes. Our dumpster is right outside our front door. And oh, these, it's not my at, dumpster. It's 5 a.m. Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday morning, 5 a.m. And that motherfucker bangs it on the fucking ground. Clomp. Damn right. Clonk. Clonk. Loud as fuck. God damn. Man. 
But it's back. He's fact, angry, I, you know, Yona. Well, at that point, I'm trying to go back to sleep because, as folks know, or if you don't know now, you know, uh, I set my alarm clock for 4:20 a.m. so right. I can wake up in the middle of the night every night and get high. Because I, I get high at four, and there's 4:20 twice a day. Why not get high at least twice? Or more, and, and then, if you want to. And then you know. when I do that on Wednesday mornings, and, you know, I'm laying in bed, and it's like 4.58, I'm about to pass out, and then, ying, 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 conk, 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 goddamn garbage truck. Oh, that yeah, reminds me. That it. reminds me, you know, I have good news. Uh, some oh, dude yeah? I've never heard of followed me on Twitter today. That's not the good news. The good news is he grows weed. So I followed him back. Yeah. Oh, that a friend with weed is a friend is a indeed. Friend indeed. That's exactly. right. Bam. All right. Let's see. Didn't I upload that one too? Let's go to my content. Yes. Yes, I did. You uh, sure? jump in and I'm not doing ads. It's been enough. Oh, there it is. It's working. Okay. God damn it. And then I try to queue it up. And it just rumble is impossible. Anyway. Okay. I got it all lined up. And oh I can't play it till I share the screen. That's it. Uh Okay, so non sequitur time. Um, here at Liberty Radio and Grand Theft World Community at large, we are we're all for autonomy and free will and choice. Uh, but uh, mind you, um, we are not encouraging people to duplicate the behavior that you are about to observe uh -oh. on this video. That this should be a lesson to you. To not smoke fucking battery acid out of an old light bulb using the barrel of an ink pen as a straw and then go shop at Walmart, play the slot machines, and finish out at the bar at night. So without further ado, That's very come on, specific. let's go. Just fucking wired remix. Because, you know, there's a lot of drug use across the United States and people have cell phones everywhere. And it's getting so bad with the tweakers and everything. That, that people are like, oh my God, what is this wrong with this person? And you look at that person and if you look at their face, they don't see anything wrong. They're having the time of their lives. They don't care that you're filming them. They're high as fuck. They're wired to the max for like two or three days. <laughs> Wired in the Max. Wired in the Max for two, three days. Wired in the Max. Wired in the Max for two, three days. Not even the most highest motherfucker in the video. I, I, I start with kind of high and real 
really high and way too high. As we wired to the max for two, three days. Shout out to Ed Bella.
That fucking. That is what it looks like too. In case anyone was wondering. No, that's it, man. Two hours down in the books. Did we time that just right again? Damn near. Bro, you've been right on top of the timing like night after night now. Son yeah. of a bitch. No. Say good night to the people. Wait, don't look in the gun. says to me, go here, Don't get you here in the gun, Love you all. Listen.